Hey class, so today's gonna be lecture 36. This is the uh, last lecture that we're gonna have. Uh, I will post a exam review for the final exam still. Uh, so I guess that's technically like the last video we'll have. Uh, but this is the last of uh, any new material that we're gonna be covering uh, in the class. Okay, so we'll just get to it. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about uh, buffers. And uh, this is really important, like in the body, our blood needs to be maintained at a certain pH in order uh, for everything to work proper, properly. So we're gonna talk about buffers and how our body uh, maintains pH. All right, let's go ahead and take this quiz to um, review what we learned last time. Okay, so this says uh, human blood has a pH of 7.4. Uh, figure out which form of carbonate is the most common at this pH. All right, okay. Uh, so I, I've showed you before kind of the easiest way I know of to do this is to draw these uh, graphs. So this is going to be our carbonic acid. Uh, and then, uh, then we have pH on the x-axis and then like percent abundance on the y-axis. All right. and. Uh, uh, when pH equals pKa, right, that's where you have 50% carbonic acid and 50% of the bicarbonate. So the pKa of carbonic acid is about 6.4. Okay, and then uh, again, when you have 50% of the bicarbonate and 50% uh, carbonate, that's at this point, and so that's going to be the pKa of hydrogen carbonate or bicarbonate, and that's about 10.3. Uh, so if we're looking at right here, where the pH is about uh, 7.4, right, that's the pH of our blood. Okay, we're going to uh, have mostly hydrogen carbonate, okay, is what we have mostly going on. Okay. All right, so we're talking about buffers. So what a buffer does is, um, well, first let's talk about what happens without a buffer. So if you add acid or base to water, uh, the pH is going to change uh, quite drastically, right? So in this little illustration, we have a pH of 7. This is neutral water. Add some acid, and we go to pH of 4. Or we add some base, and we go to a pH of 10.5. So when you have a buffer solution, so here's a buffer solution, aqueous uh, water solution and you add some acid, uh, the pH may only change to 6.9, right? Or if you add base, it goes to 7.1. This is a very simplified drawing, but what it just illustrates is what a buffer solution does. All it does is uh, create an environment where if you add some acid, it's not gonna change the pH. We, well, if you add acid or base, it's not gonna change the pH very much. So this is what our body uses. If our body didn't have buffers, then as soon as you drank something acidic like soda or something, then the pH of your body would change quite drastically and that would have negative effects. Um, or, uh, oh yeah, but uh, because our body has buffer systems, you can drink soda and uh, it's not gonna change the pH of your body too much, okay? I suppose as long as you don't drink too much soda. All right. All right, talking more about buffers here. So again, they resist changes in pH from the addition of an acid or a base. Uh, in the body, basically, it will absorb any hydronium or uh, protons uh, or hydroxide from foods uh, or drinks um, and different cellular processes. So there are cellular processes in the body as well that can produce acid or base but uh, these buffers will absorb any of those in order to maintain uh, a balanced pH for the body. Important and proper functioning of cells and blood. And like we've talked about already, the blood maintains a pH close to 7.4, okay? So here's, uh, I've kind of boiled this lecture down uh, to what you need to know. Uh, this is the last lecture and there's already so much material in your head that I'm uh, really trying to simplify this lecture. Um, Okay, so what you need to know is a buffer solution contains a, a weak acid and its conjugate base. Okay, so that's what a buffer solution will contain. 
here's an example. You can have a buffer solution of phosphoric acid and sodium dihydrogen phosphate, okay? You have a weak acid and the conjugate base salt uh, of the weak acid. Another one would be uh, nitrous acid and potassium nitrite, okay? Anyway, uh, but what you can't have is just a random, um, or sorry, you can't have a strong acid, right? So this is a strong acid, so this is not gonna work as a buffer solution. It needs to be a weak acid and the conjugate base. This one doesn't work because uh, bromide is not the conjugate base of hydrofluoric acid, okay? All right. All right, go ahead and try this quiz out here. Okay, so it says, which of the following combinations produces a buffer solution? Again, to produce a buffer solution, we need a weak acid, okay? And then we need its conjugate base salt, okay? So hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, so we can't use one. Uh, phosphoric acid uh, is a weak acid. However, it doesn't have the conjugate base, so it, this one doesn't work. Uh, carbonic acid is weak, and sodium bicarbonate, that is the conjugate base of carbonic acid, so that works. And this is acetic acid and uh, potassium acetate. Uh, this is the conjugate base of acetic acid. So that one works as well. Uh, sorry about this one. You may have not have seen this one too much, but uh, we've talked a little bit about acetate and acetic acid. Okay. All right. So here's kind of what's happening. Uh, so buffer action, right? So this is what the buffer is doing to maintain your pH, right? It maintains a relatively constant pH when uh, small amounts of acid and base are added. That's kind of key. If you start to overload the system, the buffer loses its ability to maintain the pH. The way it works, uh, kind of quickly in a nutshell, is let's say you have this buffer solution here. If you add a little bit of acid, okay, what it's going to do is going to this uh, H3O plus or a little bit of acid is going to um, get picked up by the conjugate base. And that conjugate base, as it picks up the proton from the hydronium, will turn it into acetic acid. So normally by adding a hydronium to a, a solution, you're increasing the hydronium concentration. Um, but if you have this conjugate base in here, when you add the hydronium, it gets picked up uh, by the conjugate base, turned into acetic acid in this case, and your hydronium concentration doesn't really go up uh, because it was consumed by this weak base. Same thing with the OH, right? So you could um, raise the pH of a solution by adding OH minus, but the OH minus is gonna um, act as a base and pick off a proton from the acetic acid, and that gets converted over into the conjugate base of acetic acid. And so this is uh, kind of the relationship you'd have, um, but the OH gets consumed. Um, so you're really not changing the pH too much. You're adjusting the relative concentration between acetic acid and acetate. Um, but we'll see in an equation here that as long as this relative concentration doesn't change too much, and that's why this is a small amount, it really has very little effect on the pH. So here's a big uh, math derivation that I'm not going to go through because um, I'm just uh, going to make the assumption most people don't care as much. Uh, but if some of you do care, there you go. There it is. This is what you need to know. I would write this down. Um, this is the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. You don't necessarily need to know that name, uh, but just know this equation, right? This relationship. This is the equation you're going to use for almost all buffer questions. Okay, it can be answered using this equation. And it comes from uh, the Ka of this um, very basic uh, equation involving an acid and its conjugate base. Okay, and that's kind of what we're looking at here. All right, sounds good. So if this, if you're taking the log of one, log of one equals zero, so if your conjugate base concentration and your conjugate acid, or sorry, and your acid concentration are about the same, or if they are the same, this will be zero. In that case, the pKa equals uh, 
the pH. Uh, and because of the log here, as long as these concentrations don't change too much, it's really not going to have a lot of effect on the pH going forward. So that's kind of the, I guess, the kind of main idea there behind the buffers. But uh, the most important thing to, to pull from this is um, just know that a buffer um, is a way for the body to maintain pH or any solution to maintain a pH, even if strong acid or strong base are added in. Okay, and then we'll talk about how to apply this equation doing calculations uh, and some quiz questions here. Okay, so here's how we're going to use this equation. Okay, so this says uh, the weak acid uh, dihydrogen uh, phosphate is one component that buffers the pH blood. So if this is the acid, right, then our conjugate base would just be hydrogen phosphate, okay? So we have the acid component and the conjugate base component. This weak acid has a Ka of 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8. What is the pH of the buffer if the dihydrogen phosphate concentration is 0 0.2 molar and the hydrogen phosphate concentration is 0.3 molar? Okay, so this is uh, all your buffer solution, or most of the buffer equations are going to follow this kind of suit. They're going to give you um, some of the information, and you're going to use the Henderson Hasselbalch equation to solve it. Okay, so we're given the Ka, which we can transform into a pKa just by taking the negative log of it, right? We're given the uh, acid concentration here and the conjugate base concentration. So we would have the pKa and we'd have this number and this number and we can just solve for pH, okay? Oops, all right. So taking the negative log of the Ka, this gives us the pKa, okay? And then log of uh, plugging in the concentrations for the conjugate base and the weak acid, you get this quantity here. And then solving that together, you can see that pH equals 7.38, okay? So that's kind of how you do these problems. They're pretty simple. Um, Anyway, go ahead and uh, pause the video and try this one out. All right, so it says, what is the pH of a carbonic acid buffer? That is 0.2 molar carbonic acid and 0.1 molar uh, bicarbonate. And it gives you the Ka of carbonic acid. Uh, so again, we're going to uh, convert Ka into pKa using the um, negative log of the Ka. The negative log of Ka gives us the pKa here. And then we can plug in the, uh, con the acid concentration here and the conjugate base concentration over here on top. And we're set up to put this in the calculator to solve for the pH, which is 6.07. Okay, so these are how a lot of the buffer qu questions will look. The other thing you might see about buffers is talking about buffer range. Um, so um, every, every buffer has a different range, right? The range is going to be around what the Ka is. Because if you remember that Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, pH equals pKa plus the log of the base and acid concentration. And in a buffer, your acid and base concentration are about equal. So that means when that happens, your pKa equals your pH. Uh, anyway, all this to say that um, the pH of a buffer solution is going to be the pKa plus or minus one, okay? So it's gonna be, your buffer is gonna maintain the pH in a range of plus or minus one of the pKa of whatever buffer system you're using. So if you're using a buffer system of phosphoric acid, then your pKa is 2.12, and the range is gonna be from 1.12 to 3.12. That's the range at which the buffer uh, actually works. Anytime you go out of that range, um, then the buffer just starts to break down and um, even if you add a little bit of acid, the pH is going to change drastically once you get out of this range, okay? All right. Go ahead and try this question on your own. Okay, so this says you want to prepare a buffer with a pH of about 3.4. What should you use as your buffer system? So again, you want to choose a buffer system where the, the pKa uh, is within one of the whatever pH you're trying to do. So if you converted these Ka's to pKa using the negative log, uh, you would find what the pKa for all these different acids are. 
and we want a pH of about 3.4. So we're just going to choose the buffer system that has a pKa closest to 3.4 out of all these here. So that would be nitrous acid, right? The nitrous acid looks like this. And then the um, conjugate base of this would be NO2 minus, right? Okay. So E would be your answer. All right. That was a very uh, quick lecture. <laughs> I really, uh, again, I, at this point, I want to make sure um, you're not too overwhelmed. They're studying for the final, and there's a lot of information to review. So I just wanted to give you kind of the meat and potatoes here for the buffers, um, enough to hopefully answer your homework questions um, and get a little bit of exposure to this. So, all right, that's going to be it for all the material for this class. Congratulations, you made it through. And uh, I'll record the final exam and post that, um, obviously, um, with some time before the final so you can watch that and study for the final. So, alrighty, we'll catch you next time.